Right, I thought we'd do a different kind of video today. Now, it's not very often I actually get to go out and DJ. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe because people don't want me to DJ or I'm just too lazy to put myself forward. Uh, but, as a lot of you will know, I love DJing. I, I have a full setup all at home. And every now and again, I get to go out. And I often get asked, what do I use? So, do you know what? Today, we're going to go through... Might split this up into two little social media reels on Instagram and Facebook and things like that. I'm going to go through what I'm going to take to my next gig. Right, so what's in the box? Yep, you guessed it right. Luckily, this next gig I'm going to go and do, I'm going to go and play vinyl. Now, a lot of people say to me, oh, Michael, I bet you play vinyl because it sounds better. No, not particularly. Um, do you, because it's the old school way of doing things. No, not particularly. I quite like playing MP3s, I love using controllers, I love, love using Serato, I love using record box. Um, I, for me, vinyl, it's just because I am of a certain age and I've always had records in my life and it, it's the physical item. It's got nothing to do with the sound, it's got nothing to do with the pretentious, I can mix, I can't mix, you're not a real DJ unless you're playing vinyl. I don't believe in any of that nonsense if I'm being honest. As long as the music's good and uh, people are enjoying it, is good enough for me. So the vinyl thing for me is just, I've got a vinyl collection, I still like to collect, it's a tactile thing, I, I, I really do like the the physical item of trying to mix it and stuff like that, and to be honest with you, yeah, if I had a pair of CDJs, my mixes might be, and I have got some CDJs, um, my mixes might be a bit tighter, if I'm being honest, but I just really, really enjoy this format. So this is my favourite setup, in the box, what have we got? Set of Technics Mark 7s, 1210s, Red Bull Edition. I like to go a bit bling, yeah. So basically, it's just the same as the normal 7, but this has got a limited edition uh, Red Bull decal on here, and it's got a gold arm, and it came with some Red Bull slip mats, which are still sealed in the box. How nerdy is that? So I have a pair of those. Set of Audiphone Digitals, um, which... It's very rare I actually use time code. Uh, the, the digital stylus is aimed at using time code vinyl. Uh, I don't really use time code vinyl if I'm being honest. Um, but I found that this is a good old rounder. Uh, I've tried most of the Audiphone stylus. I do think the club is the best sounding one. But you may have noticed I've got my turntables in this orientation uh, because I do like to have a little bit of a dabble with a bit of a scratch. Don't claim to be any kind of real scratch wizard, but I just enjoy it. So I've set my turntables out for that. Mainly I'm trying to do some mixing and stuff like that. So, But I've learned, I'm quite comfortable with this now. I like this layout and um, I've gone with a two channel scratch mixer, which I'll come to in a minute. So I've gone with the digital because it's possibly the best all rounder. It's, it's nice and loud. Uh, I find it's great for scratching. Um, and it's great for mixing and if I wanted to use time code it's great for that so it just ticks a lot of boxes I didn't go with a scratch stylus I thought that might be just a bit of a one trick pony I have had a set of clubs before the club is nice it sounds nice um, but it's no good for scratching on so I wanted a good all-rounder and I found the Audiform Digital absolutely superb moving on from there oh, my slip mats a Dr Suzuki scratch mats now these are super, super slippy, but again, probably wasted on me because my scratching does leave a little bit, bit to, do, to be desired if I'm being honest. And it is something I just like doing, but I have found I've tried a few slip mats and these, the Dr. Suzuki, are mint. The mixer, right? Now, you speak to somebody who's owned quite a lot of DJ mixers. Uh, I've had DJM 900s and Nexuses, and I have obviously got the shop, so I get to play around with a lot of stuff. But hands down, and I wasn't sure when I, when I took this on, when I bought this mixer for myself, I was like, I'm gonna have a go at a, a different style of DJing. And I've always had four channel mixers and things like that. And this time I went for a DJM S11, which everybody will know, it's their battle style um, mixer. And if I'm being honest, I didn't think I was gonna get on with it. Cause I've always had that DJM 800, 900 type layout. I've always had the, the button down here for the effects, none of this paddles things, no pads. But I tried it for a few months. I left my DJM 900 Nexus 2 on the shelf. It never went back in my setup. I just love this mixer. 
Um, it's not for everybody, but I just think this is the best mixer I have ever owned. DJ MS11, I've pimped mine up a little bit, so I bought some uh, coloured caps just to pimp it out a bit. And, and I'll probably put a link in the description of the video, there's a guy out there that makes a nice clear Perspex top, so when you look I can see all the inside of the mixer, which is a cool thing, and it's that's bespoke, you can't buy it like that. Um, why do I love this mixer so much? Well, I like playing records, and it's brilliant for playing records. Fantastic, the preamps in it I just find a sweet, works really, really good. So you just wanna play records on it, all the effects are there, I've really got used to these paddle things. I think it's just so accessible. You can be, you can just reach things. Everything is kind of in reach. I love the effects. I love the way you can set them up. I know we've got the screen in the middle here for the touch effects. Not my bag. I don't really like the touch effects thing. I like to have more, slightly more control. Um, and I think there's enough effects in here to sink a battleship. I mean, I'm not being funny. There's things on this mixer I have not even turned on. You could never get bored with this thing. Um, the crossfader in it is absolutely second to none. I've never known a crossfader like it. One of my favorite little things, smooth echo. Oh, smooth echo for mixing with vinyl is just stunning. Absolutely brilliant. Um, also, another reason why I like this, this mixer so much, is that I can, I can use it digitally. So I can use this with Serato, with time code, and I have done, and it works great. You use this with Serato or Record Box, it absolutely comes into its own. It, it, it just really does come into its own. Um, I tend to use it um, with Phase, you know, the little Phase. Uh, I haven't got that here to show you today. I've lent that to somebody. Uh, you know who you are, um, and I want that back. You know who you are, I want that back. Yeah, so if I'm ever gonna do any time code type things, I tend to use Phase and not the digital uh, vinyls. Uh, but you put your phase on there and it just works superb, absolutely brilliant. With Serato it becomes even more wireless as well. And then all the pads come into interplay. Um, it's not very often I DJ like that um, because I have got CDJs in my life and if I'm going to play digital music, I tend to use a CDJ. So I, I do play a lot of vinyl. It's, it's, it's what I like doing. Um, and I don't do it just because it's clever. I just like it. It's a bit of a faff. I mean, I've got, I've got, the reason I've done this video to show you all is I've got a gig coming up and um, there's three other DJs on and they're all playing vinyl and I went, right, I'm going to bring my set up and we'll do it from, from here. Um, so that mixer, honestly, I haven't even unlocked half of the things that this thing does. It is just superb. So if you to ask me what's my favourite bit of kit, oh, it's that. It's that. No, no two ways about it. Works great with CDJs as well, but I'm not into four channel mixing, uh, a three channel mixing. I just want to play two records and play them well. And I like to, uh, you know, I've been really trying to practice the, the scratching thing. And, and, and I enjoy doing it. I don't do it because I think I'm good at it. I do it because I just enjoy it. And basically, isn't that why we do this? Uh, I know there's a lot of DJs out there getting paid and it's their job, um, but there is a percentage of DJs where it's a hobby and you should be just doing it because you love it. Uh, don't have to be the next big thing, just do it because you love it and you love the music. So that is my setup. What you might have noticed here, I tend to leave how I wire my stuff. I like to leave what I call little tails because I don't like having to sh shove all the cables in uh, and lifting the mixer out. So I have these little tails that I can tuck away. So there's my power for my deck. There's uh, my power for my other deck and then I've got my power for my mixer. And I just plug in IEC leads into the end of there and XLRs and that all just tucks in there nicely. So I'm not having to lift the decks out. I haven't got three pin plugs rattling around in here. I like, I like I leave these little, what I call tails. So I have my three power tails and I have my XLR tail and that goes, and then that'll all get plugged in. Um, this is a new item, the table. I'll talk about the table later. Uh, it's a brand new item to me and I think I'm gonna be using this. It isn't for the swanky um, DJs that like to have cable management uh, all sorted. This is very much a, a table where everybody can see exactly what's going on. Whereas like, I know a lot of the DJ booths, we like to cover all this mess up because when you're at a wedding, bride and groom are looking for a nice clean look. This is not the, the look that I'm kind of going for because I'm not doing that type of work. But I'll talk about the table because that's a new product. Uh, and to be honest, we were gonna do a full video on that. 
but this is made by uh, Global Trust, uh, removable legs and everything, but I'm going to show you that. We're going to split this video up into a couple of bits and bobs, because when I also go out, I go out with a massive bag of stuff, and I think in the next video, I'd like to show you what's in my bag. We've had a look at what's in the box, we'll have a look at what's in the bag. Just wanted to share that with you, a little bit different.